He's been to every province and territory in our great country and has hundreds of rants to prove it. Rick Mercer is sharing those rants and the wild adventures that went with them in this brand new book. Final Report merges comedy and politics along with some never before heard stories and behind the scenes shenanigans. We welcome Rick Mercer and his shenanigans into our Your Morning Studios. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm very happy to be here to share the shenanigans. Well, you say, you write, for as long as I can remember, politics has been my spectator sport. It has always been my baseball. What makes it a sport to you? Well, um, it was just always there. I had a godfather that was involved politically, and he would talk about politics nonstop with me. And it was uh, one of those situations, I guess, when you're a kid and you have an adult paying attention to you and talking to you like you're a sensible human being. And, uh, and I was just always attracted to it. Newfoundland, in particular, has very colorful characters. Yeah. And, and I, liked, I liked following it the same way that people follow baseball. And I liked, you know, talking about it. Yeah. But you couldn't really talk to kids about it <laughs> because they didn't want to know what yeah. Premier Moores was up to. But I liked sitting around and talking to adults about it. But, uh, you know, it, it, I, I've gotten this question a lot in my life, most notably because of my last name. But if you have an interest in politics, if you're passionate about politics, and if you can voice that passion, mm -hmm. people want to know if you're willing to take the next step and present yourself as a candidate. Has that ever been an option for you? Well, it's... In the back of my mind, it was because, uh, again, politics is my sport. And I think anyone who loves a sport, they think, you know, someday they're going to call me up finally and tell me to be the general manager of the team. They're going to ask me to be the general manager of the Leafs. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to finally straighten yeah. things out. But that's not the way the world works. I, I, I have always, uh, I've always been a keen observer in politics and I like it. Uh, but no, I've never really had an interest in doing that. So many of those observations played them played their, their way out in, in a rant and, yeah. and maybe made famous in, in Graffiti Alley. I think that's just down the street. Just down the street here, yeah. Now, you did every one of those with your cameraman, Don Spence. Yes. A according to his math, yes. you walked 42 kilometers together. Yes. This... And he did them backwards. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I had the chip on my shoulder. He had the camera on his. And uh, it's great that you mention him because, you know, he's, uh, he's the best cameraman in the country, I think. And, and when we started the show uh, 15 years ago, the big concern was, he would get bored because he has so many options. And I'm so oh, yeah, proud of the fact that we, yeah. we never got bored. And, uh, and he's a tremendous guy. And, and, and the book has a lot of stories about being on the road in Canada with these guys because yeah. it was the same guys. We never changed it up. It was the same four people on the road for 15 years. And what a privilege it was that on a Thursday we would find out that Oh, Saturday morning, you're flying to Ottawa, then changing planes, flying to Nunavut, then you're going to get in a smaller plane, fly two hours <laughs> yeah. north, then get in a dog sled team, yeah. and then you're going to do a shoot, and then you'll be back four days later. What a great gift that was for 15 years. All right, be before we talk about the stories themselves, one more question about uh, shooting these rants. Uh, yeah. how, the, the, the end result was always perfect, but how many takes would it take? Oh, sometimes there could be many, many. Like, uh, sometimes I would do 30 times, 40 yeah. times. Because, as I say, Don was going backwards, and he could hook himself on a rusty nail or <laughs> sl slide on the ice. And plus, it's an active alley. There's actual legitimate commercial trade going on, and then not so legitimate commercial trade going on. So <laughs> there was always something. OK, I want to talk about a story with Jan Arden, because you, she's a great show, friend of our show. She was yes. a great friend of your show. I think you called her the future Mrs. Mercer in the book. Um, she only bailed on you once, right? Tell me about uh, why she bailed on you. It involved a giant cave with hundreds of bats. Well, I would always, I would always ask Jan to come on these adventures with me. And Jan was a regular guest yeah. on a show that didn't have regular guests. We didn't <laughs> have regular guests, except Jan was the perfect foil. And so one time I did say, Jan, this will be perfectly safe. Uh, we're going to get in a helicopter. We're going to fly to the top of a mountain. Then we're going to go into a cave, and there's all these bats in there, and they're mating. And, <laughs> and a bat will fly in your hair, and boom, we'll be home by lunch, and we'll have a great yeah. piece. And uh, she was, and I promised her it would be entirely safe, which I always did. That was my number one priority. And that was a shoot that went so horribly, horribly wrong. It never aired. And, uh, and it was one of those shoots where everyone involved in the shoot thought that they were about to bite it. It was going to be a, a disastrous end. Uh, thankfully, we all survived. But, uh, but Jan was a, a great guest on the show for many years. And of course, she has her own show coming yes, up indeed. on CTV. And, uh, and I'm, I'm a guest on her show. So the world has come full circle. We only have a few seconds left. Um, tips on crafting the best possible rant. Do you have to be passionate about it? Oh, absolutely. I, I never once manufactured outrage. I never manufactured anything. Uh, the, the, the secret to a rant is, 
is the length. They're very short. They're a minute 30. They're quick reads. But I would take something that was seven or eight pages and distill it and distill it and distill it. And I equated it to taking a, an entire cow and reducing it to a cup of gravy. <laughs> it takes a lot of work yeah. to get it down there, but it's worth it in the end. Well, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for distilling 15 years into this great book. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. We'll see you soon. Cheers. All the best.